Believe it or not, all these buttons are connected to one single STM32 microcontroller pin with the help of the code that we have constructed in the previous tutorial. In this video, we are going to extend our code to interface 7 buttons instead of 3 and add PWM signal controlled buzzer driving circuit in order to play different musical notes and I will share with you the 3D models that I designed and printed to modify the buzzer sound level. We are going to play with awful sounds today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Before getting started with our tutorial today, I want to let you know that this is a continuation of the previous video so make sure to have a look at it to have a full image of what's going on. Alright, so let's start with the hardware that we are going to interface. So if you have watched the last tutorial, you will notice that now we have 4 additional buttons to read. So we are going to modify the ADC readings regions that we had constructed previously in order to suit the new voltage divider circuit. The buzzer driving circuit is quite simple and self-explaining. Just remember to add this freewheeling diode because of the buzzer inductive element. Alright, so let's start with the new configuration that we need to add to our project. First of all, as you can see, I've just removed the three GPIO pins because we are not going to use them anymore. And in order to generate a PWM signal, the first thing that should come to our minds is a timer. We have done such configuration before, so it's not going to be a hard job to accomplish. So in timer 2, PWM channel 1 is activated, and the PWM signal frequency depends actually on three parameters, and they are the timer clock, and we have it here 72 MHz. And here we have two parameters, and they are the prescaler and the counter period. And since we are not going to modify the timer clock on the go, there are only two parameters to play with. And here we can see how the PWM signal frequency can be determined using this formula. Changing the timer period will actually modify the duty cycle of the PWM signal. So we are actually left with only one parameter and is the prescaler to modify the frequency of the signal. And by knowing this, with every different button press, we can actually generate a PWM signal with different frequency, which means that with the help of the buzzer, we are generating musical notes. So one last thing to mention in the timer configuration is the pulse value. We are going actually to change this value inside our code to turn on slash off the buzzer. Alright, so now it's time to generate our new configuration and modify our code. If you have watched my previous tutorial, you will notice that the code has not changed too much. And here are the most significant changes. So we see here timer 2 with channel 1 is started to generate PWM signal. But since our capture compare register value is 0, no signal will be generated at this time. Alright, so in the main code you will notice that the number of the used conditions has been increased. And this is because now we are interfacing more buttons and the regions that we talked about before has been modified. And inside every condition, the prescaler register of timer 2 changes because our purpose is to modify the frequency of the PWM signal. And then the capture compare register is loaded with a value of 1. So a signal is actually generated at that time. In order to have a clear idea about the determination of the region boundaries used in every condition, please check the video shown in the card above, where everything is explained in clear details. So check that out. We have here 7 different regions, because we are going to interface 7 buttons in order to generate 7 different sounds, which are the musical notes that we know. And at the end of button press check, we have here Capture Compare Register is loaded with 0, so no sound is generated. And all the button debounce functions are called here in order to discharge the software capacitor that we have implemented in the previous tutorial. And by doing so, we have actually managed to build our simple electronic piano. So now it's time to see how it works in practice. Beep. 
Notice how the signal frequency is modified after every button press. I've actually worked on designing a small buzzer sound amplifier and a buzzer sound reducer and printed them using my 3D printer. So now let's see how they will perform in real world. This is actually a mechanical solution for sound level control. But you know what? In my next tutorial, I'm planning to add sound level control feature without adding any model on the top of the buzzer. So stay sharp for that. At the end of the day, I want to show you what I managed to play using this electronic piano. It sounds horrible, I know, but you know, it does the job. Ah, oh, by the way, everything related to this tutorial, including code, STL files, and circuit diagrams, are shared in the video description below, so check it out. This brings me to the end of this video. In the upcoming tutorials, I'm actually planning to add more interesting features to this electronic piano. So if you believe that you are learning something new here, please let your friend know about useful electronics by sharing this video. And you may consider supporting me on Patreon. To let such videos coming. Thank you for watching and bye bye.